Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new week and a brand new day of Road to TCG Worlds 2017. Now today we are featuring Azul Garcia Griego's list which did get first place at Orlando Regionals. Um, I did want to feature this list, I did bid a very similar list in my rounds um, in a very 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 tight match against Mike Newey. And yeah, I feel like the deck definitely has a lot of raw power in the sense that it's very simple but also very strong. And in the current meta game with Carpenter, it seems to do really, really well. And doesn't have too many weaknesses because there aren't too many, too many useful lightning type Pokemon. Now you are very prone to a Jolteon lock, but even that wasn't enough um, to stop Azul winning Orlando Regionals because. Valplum box, as you might have seen from the previous video I did last week, um, definitely has a lot of tools at its disposal, but having so many tools might end up being a bit counterproductive, maybe, at times, and that, along with the unusual text, or like the unusual cards, I guess, as all ran, were what I, what, were what, allowed him to take the victory. Sorry, I apparently I can't English today. I apparently, apparently. Anyways, <laughs> um, I hope you guys watched the TCG Pokedex series last Friday uh, featuring the Furio deck because that was a really, really fun day. Um, if you want to see like something out of the box and you want to see Furio literally go toe to toe against some of the most, um, or against a very competitive deck, I definitely recommend you guys check that out. But anyways, enough of that, let's review the deck list. So, 3 Veltal EX, the main attacker of um, today's video. Evil Ball um, can punish opponents for powering up their Pokemon. Very good attack, and Y Cyclone is, deals a very nice amount of damage, and the effect allows you to conserve energy in play. So, definitely very useful. Then we have two Fright Knight Eveltal, which is def definitely can cause a headache to your opponent. If you start out with it, then they don't start out with something too good. Their float zones are pretty much useless because they cannot be used thanks to Fright Knight. And Pitch Black Spear is also a very, very good attack to finish off something that Eveltal EX might not have been able to, to end or to set up KOs for Eveltal EX. Um, it has a kind of luck element adds a lock element to the deck if you will whenever you don't have carpenter out because you can lie sander up something like a hoopa and trap it there so whilst you pick away at that hoopa and the bench pokemon so definitely adds a lot of versatility and then we have the other Veltal, which i'm pretty sure it's probably tied with the most featured card with i don't know um maybe best begin i don't know but aside from Shaman, Eveltal is probably one of the most featured cards so far, and there's reason to that. Attacking, dealing 30 damage and attaching an energy from your discard pile to a bench Pokemon is really powerful, coming from a 130 HP basic. And then we have a very simple 2-2 Carburetor line in order to shut down abilities such as Giant Water Shuriken, such as Vileplume's Allergy Poland, such as Shaman's um, setup for the late game and just very useful overall. Then, um, in terms of supporters, we have a very consistent 4 Sycamore, 3N, 2 Lysander, and the surprise of the tournament, I guess, 1 Olympia. Now, Olympia kind of works like AZ, but differently. Gives you that switching effect. You don't get to pick up the Pokemon, but the damage you heal, the 30 damage you heal on your active Pokemon can sometimes um, like throw your opponent's math off so it's actually a very good card and i'm surprised it took us this long maybe to realize how good it actually is then we have a four versus seeker four ultra ball um support line with two trainers mail we have three max elixir which this was one of the surprises from this list i'm surprised he doesn't run four um but i guess if Eltal is Eveltal EX is a very cost-effective attacker by only requiring two energy, so maybe it's not that necessary. And instead, he opted to run two Enhanced Hammer. Now, Enhanced Hammer, I'm pretty sure, are the cards that gave Azul the win in the final because 
Valplume, this format is a lot slower than the previous one because no compressor and things like that. So it, they run exclusively special energy and enhance, and they can only maximum attach one energy per turn. So double enhanced hammer on a single turn or on consecutive turns can definitely change the pace of a game by so much because you literally delay them by two turns. And then we have um, three fighting fury belt for our basic Pokemon. Even Fright Night Eveltal can benefit from the extra HP thanks to Carbodor's Carbotoxin. And then we have three Floatstone to retreat and prevent exactly what Eveltal wants to do to our opponents. One Super Ed to recover potential Pokemon or energy. And then we have two Parallel CD to combat um, Rainbow Road Cernias and Mega Rayquaza. And potentially Greninja. And then we have a Reverse Valley where that extra 10 damage can actually make a difference in KOing something in the math i'm not entirely sure but i'm sure there were a lot of scenarios where that extra 10 damage were able to make the difference between a three hit ko and a two hit ko or potentially a two hit ko and a one hit ko so that's the deck list let's jump right into the games and once again guys i apologize for my yawning i generally like i'm starting to believe that there's some sort of trigger here because the past few days I've generally slept well. Um, yesterday I even took a nap during the afternoon. I slept um, my seven hours. I mean, I guess eight is the best, but I slept seven hours. I'm not super stressed right now. Work is pretty good, um, not too demanding. So I generally don't know. And I was perfectly fine. I've been perfectly fine all day. I have not yawned once that I can think of um, all day. But it just seems like I keep, like whenever I decide to record, <laughs> I will simply start yawning like crazy. Okay, so water type deck box. I didn't notice what type of deck my opponent is using. And we see a metal energy and a reseeker. So with the Trubbish, we can immediately assume Mega Scissor. I don't think there's any other viable metal Pokemon at the moment, and there's a Scissor EX, so I was right. Now some metal Scissor decks are opting to run the special Steel Energy, others are not. Um, my opponent does hit the Max Elixir, which is very good for him, and he's gonna Sycamore, so a pretty much perfect hand as he can even set up um, Mega Turbo for later on. Okay. So my opponent does manage to attach a floatstone to the active Trubbish and a Spirit Link to the Scissor EX. But here we actually have an opportunity to Fright Knight. So I'm gonna Ultra Ball away the Enhanced Hammer and the Olympia. The Olympia being in the discard means we can start reusing it with Verseeker. And if my opponent doesn't have the Carburetor immediately, this Eveltal might actually lock him down a little bit and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna deal 30 damage to the trubbish with shaman and i'm just gonna end here um that way i do guarantee that fright night of Eltal will be in the active slot i will also bench my own trubbish although do i need to What would I need Trubbish for? Or Garbodor for? Probably not actually. Yeah, so I'm just gonna Sky Return. Well, yeah. I guess for a future shame intro, but that's okay. Um, we do promote the Belt also. Does he have Garbodor now? The Spirit Link, if he doesn't have Garbodor, then stopping the Spirit Link is not too big, but stopping the Float Zone is actually pretty important. Um, if he had retreated, then it's still very important, but stopping the retreat actually saves me from getting damage at this point in time. Yeah, my opponent simply Sycamore's away, his whole hand actually chooses to discard a Mega Scissor. So he's looking for that Ultra Ball, or for the Garp, and there's a Garp. So it's understandable that he did that. Um, that's why I wasn't too concerned concerned with not attaching an energy to Eveltal. 
But yeah, my opponent doesn't even find the Mega. Or the... Yeah, the Mega. So, now... We top deck and evolve Tully X, which is definitely the card you want to see in this situation. I'm gonna attach a basic energy there. Um, I mean, I guess I could parallel C. It doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make too big of a difference, but I'll limit my opponent's bench anyways. Um, I will bench the Trubbish. Oh, but I can't draw any more cards, actually. Oh boy. Okay. So I'm gonna end then. Well, I could save. No. There's no reason to save my Veltal right now. I guess that not attaching an energy for a turn is pretty significant. On my first turn, I mean. Um, I do it a Max Elixir and I do it another Veltal, so that's pretty nice. Um, I will Max Elixir here and I whiff. Wow. I actually whiff, that's not good. Um, I guess I'll keep the light center. Man, two, three energy were coming right here. That's okay, as long as I find an energy next turn, I should be okay. Hopefully I find a DC so that I can Y Cyclone it back. Um, otherwise a regular energy works, but obviously it'd be better to top the guy at DC. Would have been nice to hit that max elixir. Definitely would have been nice. Okay, my opponent actually decides to attach. Oh boy. Okay, he whiffs. Actually decides to attach a float stone to the bench scissor instead of. Oh man, I should have played the trainer's mail and then the max elixir, I guess. So I would have grabbed the sycamore and then I would have hit an energy. Okay, but my opponent simply decides to sycamore. I have no idea why he would attach the float stone to that scissor. I generally don't know. Um, but that's okay. So he does end up dealing damage to Eveltal. Now, I guess at this point in time, I actually prefer drawing a basic energy because of the enhanced hammer, uh, the enhanced hammer potential and the. Uh, oops. <laughs> Well, I could also KO his garb right now, but is that even worth it? Yeah, the enhanced hammer is very scary, and so are the crushing hammers. But and I still have to. I have to deal damage. Um, I guess I'll play the super rod and put back Fright Knight Veltal, which might might come in handy later in the game. And I will end once again. I will end once again. I don't want to evolve into Carpenter. Well, I guess I can, because if he lies enters, then fine, just take the KO. It's not like they're gonna get abilities back. He has his own Carpenter, so that makes sense. Makes sense to me. Um, this hand, though, this hand doesn't make too much sense to me. That shaman is really bad. Okay. So, I have a choice here. No, I don't actually have a choice. Um, man, not, grab it, not having any sycamore or follow-up energy is really bad. I will Ultra Ball, I guess. Or the Fright 90 Veltal. Simply to thin out my deck. There's still four sycamore there. And there's seven energy. The issue here is going to be, I mean, not this turn. Well, as long as he doesn't remove my energy, I will be okay-ish, I guess. Um, so that's 90 damage. Then if I attach the DC, I'm actually 10 damage short of the KO with Evil Bull, right? I'm actually 10 damage short of the KO. Okay, so he decides to get rid of my TC, which makes sense. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 120 damage. That's not the stadium we need. That is absolutely not 
Ăsta e eu mâine. Ugh. Man. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna play Prowl of City and I'm gonna limit my own bench. Just so that I can get rid of the Evil Tall. And prevent any easy prices there and the Carpenter. And then <laughs> he says well played. Okay. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Plus the 90, we are 10 short of the KO. That sucks. That really sucks. And the TCE. I would love to attach it to this Evoltal. But I have to attach it to Evoltal EX at this point. And down to zero cards. So I have so many outs. But no. Okay. Yeah, this is not good, guys. This is not good at all. I don't see how we get out of this situation. I actually don't. Um, there's no way he doesn't attack. It's gonna Iron Crusher. Now I don't have a way to to deal damage. Oh boy, this sucks. Okay, he's down to zero cards in his hand. I mean, this doesn't even help me survive another turn, but this would have been helpful to deal that extra 10 damage. It really would have been. <laughs> um, I guess, since I'm down to one energy for the KO, I can promote Baby Evelto. That's my best play, because I do have this card, so I will deal the 40 damage I need. And I have so many outs, guys. I have so many outs. And yeah, that's kind of not an out. If I mean he can't KO here, I think. Uh, he can't KO here, I think. If we're gonna have any chance at all, we need to hit right now. I'm just not seeing it. I'm generally, generally not seeing it. How am I going to? He goes for a verse seeker. Yep. So he can lie, Sandra. I need to top deck right here, right now. Man. No. Okay. Well, at least I can retreat. I guess I do hit. Okay, that's nice. I have to choose the Vault of the X. And now, the question is, do I... Do I Y Cyclone or not? He went for a Verse Seeker, so he has access to N, he has access to Sycamore. He should only have one Mega Scissor left, though. So maybe he doesn't find... Well, it still has two. Ugh. This sucks, guys. This really sucks. Um, yikes. I'm gonna keep the Fighting Fury Belt for now. And I'm gonna Y Cyclone here. Hoping, against all hope, that my opponent... Or that I get something off my prizes. Okay, Verseeker and a DCE. That gives me a follow-up attack and an N. Or a potential Olympia. But then again, I don't have energy for that. I actually don't have energy. Now, if my opponent wanted to deal 110 damage with that Caesar, he made a mistake. He's actually gonna take for a freaking grunt. Okay. Ah. Okay, man. Team for Grunt. That's very surprising. And I get a Fright Knight. Ah, man, this sucks. He 
has a guaranteed KO. Ah, that stupid versus Seeker. Man, it all comes down to me not hitting that first max elixir, and well, not drawing energy afterwards, obviously. If only this energy was the darkness. Okay, I guess I have to give up. Do you see Velto? Do I have to? If I end my opponent. Uh, I guess I'll end. I mean, best case scenario, I find a float zone here. But. <laughs> I can't even find a freaking sycamore. I can't even find a freaking sycamore, let alone energy. Okay, at least that's going my way. But I 100% need an energy. Okay, he decides to retreat and goes for a sycamore. So him not having energy there is pretty good. Although he finds an energy immediately. <laughs> he has another energy, so never mind. There you go. Ah! We can't win. I needed consecutive attacks, and I can't win anymore. <sighs> now he's 100% end proof. Yeah, there is no way I can win. There is absolutely no way I can win here. There is absolutely no way I can win here. Oh, very nice to see you, Mr. Dark Energy. Very freaking nice. There's no way. The minute, the second he hit that heads, there's just no way. I don't have enough turns, so I'm just gonna go see you guys. I don't have enough turns. All he needs to do is attack, attack, attack. He's down to one price. If he was down to two, then maybe. In a very weird scenario, but. What are you gonna do, guys? My deck just completely bricked. I never played a single Sycamore. Um, I started off all with that Shaman. That energy also delayed me quite a bit, and then and then I whiffed the max elixir, the first one, so and I never found another one, and I never found an energy. I was very bad. I was generally very bad luck. But okay, now we're up against Darkrai Giratina, which Azul had to go through in order to reach the final. So this in theory should be a good match. And I say in theory like very fake in theory. Fright Knight Yveltal could be good here. Could be good. Um Yveltal EX and the math with it is going to be very important. And I <laughs> Hands. My hands, my hands, my hands. Okay. So, not a great start. We have two turns to top deck out of this. I can't believe that's the first thing we have to do. Top deck out of situations. Okay. No brand does start Hoopa, which is good for us. Definitely good for us. To mitigate um, our start. Hopefully he ends this. <laughs> that would be my best hope. That my opponent ends me on turn 1, he shows me the end. So there is a chance. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but there is a chance. Immediately decides to play the stadium and end. Okay. So my bench is a limited one. Um. <laughs> now there's it ton of energy, a ton, a ton of energy, 
and great. Okay. So wow. Okay. This evil tall top deck is very very nice. I'm gonna start putting pressure onto that Hoopa. I guess I do want to attach the floatstone there. And I definitely don't want to end my opponent at this point in time because it doesn't look like he has a very strong hand or he has very few cards actually. So I'm just gonna transfer the TC there. Then next turn, I could potentially start spreading out damage with the Veltal, which would be very good. Yeah, my opponent simply passes. Okay. So these two turns will be very nice. And I will have Evelt all the excess back up. The math works out very nicely here with Pitch Black Spear. In the sense that I don't KO Hoopa and he can't use Floatstone to retreat. So I should be able to deal another 20 damage onto Darkrai. And because I have yet to take a single prize card, even the end will benefit us to a certain extent. So we're in a pretty good scenario here. Like it generally can't get any better, I don't think. Um, there's another dark cry. Let me think about the maths real quickly. Meh. Two, four, six, eight, nine. He's dealing 90 damage right now. He passes onto us. Okay. Let's do trainer's mail first, which is what I should have done that other game. I do trainer's mail. I guess I'll take the maximum. No. I mean, do I want to fully load my Veltal? Is that what I want to do? No, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach. I'm just gonna end. I'm gonna keep the Max Elixir for later on or for, uh, for a potential other Veltal. Um, <laughs> my hand is not exactly great. Hopefully I don't end up regretting the energy, but I definitely want to place the damage there and that puts a lot of pressure on him to find a Giratina and put a double dragon energy on there or find max elixirs because if he doesn't he's gonna be in a lot of trouble yeah he promotes the Darkrai EX there's a Giratina there's a double dragon energy so never mind but I should still be able to deal enough damage to KO the Darkrai and I have the enhanced hammer to get rid of that Double Dragon from Giratina. But my opponent does end me. So never mind. Never mind. There go all our plans. Off of that, we actually hit a Sycamore, which I am very happy to see. There's a Max Elixir I was talking about. Which it does hit. Okay, we need to deal 120 damage. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, I will promote this guy. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay, so we do have the KO here. We should have the KO. I'm gonna train your smell first before using the super rod. The ultra ball is interesting. The Lysander is interesting as well. But, okay, can I check? No, I can't check my discard pile. That's a very bad bug. Um, I'm actually not gonna take either. Wow, my deck is still 40 cards. That's pretty insane. And I'm about to make it bigger. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's no need to risk not getting a KO here. And it'd be nice to hit the Enhanced Hammer, but I don't think we will. We do actually, which is very nice. Um, so that severely limits my opponent's damage outputs. And I'm gonna counter Stadium. Um, the extra damage is obviously not gonna matter here. Or is it? Wow, it actually does matter potentially. Thing is, do I want to keep the Lysander in my hand? Because I could Y Cyclone. I'm in no threat of getting. KO'd back. So, huh. Why Ultra Ball? An energy and a Lysander for a Shaman. I think I do actually. 
definitely think I do. I would like to find the um, the Fright Night Velta and potentially use Y Cyclone to get the KO and start powering it up. But if we don't, it's not that big a deal. Um, we're actually not gonna find that. Okay. So I'll just Evil Ball for the KO. I will just Evil Ball for the KO. Okay. There's an Evil Tally X and there's a Trollish. So the Evil Tally X prize is very nice for thinking about the late game. My opponent does end me here though. We are going to be in a lot of trouble. But if he doesn't, we might be okay. He will probably end though. Wow, it doesn't grab anything. He's played one Verse Seeker and two end. He's gonna Verse Seeker for end. Yep. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Our deck is still almost 40 cards here. Almost 40 cards. But we do hit an, ul an Ultra Bolt, so we could potentially. We could potentially find a Shaman, which I just saw, and I'm not entirely sure if it's in the prizes or not. I would rather not get rid of this Evolt all the X, but that's what we top decked, and yeah. There's still another Evolt all the X, so that's okay. That is generally okay. I'm gonna set up for six, and as you can see, there's really no need to have um, Carpenter out just yet. And we do hit two Eveltals. So, what do I do here? Do I retreat or do I simply deal a lot of damage? I deal 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 points of damage with no real follow up. Or, man, having N as my only supporter really sucks. But I still think I'm gonna have to play it. Or I could retreat into Baby Eveltal, prevent potentially that KO, and deal some significant damage. Let's do that, I think. Or we deal 100 damage, and wow, I actually hit at this E. Okay, do I hit this Max Elixir? I do, wow. Okay. So maybe... Maybe I retreat... Okay. There's two Verse Seekers and one Lice and we're in my opponent's discard pile. I could follow up with an attack with this Eveltal actually. Mm. I'm gonna Evil Ball. Deal as much damage as possible. And... Actually, without Carpenter, is he gonna take the kill with Giratina? If he does, that's kind of bad. Because we won't be able to power up Ivelto. If he does that, with the Max Elixir, that's good news. There's a Shaman. Would he end though? Yeah, he's definitely not gonna attack with that dark ray. He's gonna take the kill with Giratina. Or should, at least. Oh, he's just running through his deck. Okay. And we have only played one Sycamore and no first Seekers. So we have a good seven outs, at least. Yeah, he does retreat. I have a good 7 outs here. I cannot attach a TC anymore. So that's not our plan anymore. Um, we can't play the stadium either. But what we can do is simply Oblivion Wing twice for 50 damage and power up. 
Fright Night and eventually we will have enough energy to KO the benched Dark Ride. So that's good. That is good. Okay, Olympia now. Olympia could be a factor if he does heal off that Dark Ride. If he retreats into it and then heals it off with Olympia, that would be a problem, I guess. Yikes. That Lysander. Oh my gosh. It's gonna Lysander the Fright Knight he felt though. Which makes sense. Now if I don't get an energy, I'm gonna have to retreat. And I do hit a sycamore. Finally. So can we hit an energy here? We can't. Ugh. Well, that sucked. That generally sucked big time. Okay, I could go for guard. No, I can't even attach full stones, anyways. Um, I'll grab the belt on the X. Okay, let me think this through. Do I? I do have a license in my discard pile. So. If I retreat, promote this Evelto, and I have to try that once more. Man, nah, not getting an energy would be sucked. But I guess it makes sense. We only have two left, I think. Or three, maybe? There's four, five, six, three energy left. Three darkness energy left. Okay. Basically, if it doesn't end me once again, I can versus Seeker and deal 50 damage to Darkrai EX. Okay, he's gonna Lysander once again. Ugh! Man, just stop it. Stop it. And I don't have Olympia. One. Uh, the next freaking card. The next card was Olympia. Okay. How many energy does my opponent have? Seven. There's one float stone. There's one escape rope. He has played three versus seekers. And we know he has Olympia in his hand. Ah oh, man. This sucks. This really sucks. Well. Yeah, that's what I have to do. Gonna have to retreat once again. <laughs> We're just playing nonsense here. Okay, so Giratina now has 150 damage, so. We're still gonna power up the Fright Knight Evelto, because if he retreats. Oh, well. Yeah, the Olympia. Oh, the Olympia. No, the Olympia doesn't save him actually, because Giratina has 170 HP. So he can't Olympia to prevent him from getting KO'd. If he attacks with Giratina, he loses. He probably doesn't have any Max Elixir. He actually does Olympia, okay? So maybe he's just gonna leave Shame inactive, but he can't prevent me from using um, Lysander this turn. Or I could play dumb and um, try to hit a DCE to get a KO. And I'm kind of tempted to do that just for fun. <laughs> Sets up for one. What is he looking for? Does he have a potion or something? Okay, he's gonna put three energy back with that super art, so maybe he has a max elixir still left. And he will. No, he simply passes. Okay. Uh, guys, I know it's the. Like, I have the win here. I have the win. So, I'm gonna count this as a win. Now I'm just gonna lie here. Yeah. Uh, I really wanted to, to see if I hit the DC. Yeah, there's the victory. I wanted to see if I hit the DC so that I could, because I was no longer under the, uh, the log by Giratina, so that I could potentially find the DC and KO. KO Darkrai and Giratina, like take two prizes, but I mean, 
just because I'm recording the video in a tournament, obviously I would not have thought it for more than one second and I would have simply taken the KO straight up onto the Giratina. So that was game one, I mean game two. Let's see what game three brings us. A fire deck, but Volcano, Volcanion, <laughs> Volcano, Volcanion is still priced. So what's my opponent? What fire deck is he? Oh, he's using Tal for Typhlosion, isn't he? <laughs> he's using Tal and Flame Typhlosion. We know he's using Tal and Flame Typhlosion, isn't he? Okay, going first is really good. He does choose an active, so maybe he whiffed the Tal and Flame? I don't think so, but maybe he did. It'd be great if he did. Um, otherwise, it would be really nice to find a Lysander early on. Yeah, this has to be Typhlosion Talonflame. Because um, Volcanion would have had a water typing energy in the previous screen. Whoa! <laughs> okay. Never mind, guys. Never mind. Okay. So let's see what we get here. Trainer's Mail finds us an N. Which I will take simply because I can full trouble and that way I get my choice of supporter once I find once I find um, any verse seeker in the future. And then I'm gonna find Trubbish because I could find Shaman, but then I might simply draw more cards that I don't want to discard with Sycamore. So I might as well Sycamore for a free zone card and set up the potential card order for the future. Okay, so we find some pretty good cards here, not gonna lie. Find some pretty good cards. Two energy in hand, reduces the odds of hitting the max elixir, which we do with. Makes sense, and we simply pass here, guys. Those max elixirs are not really working out, but I mean, if you draw them next to three other energy, then it makes sense. Now let's see what kind of deck my opponent has. Okay. So it is Volcanion in the end. Um, there's... Oh, okay. Trier, no. Oh, okay. So that pretty much means... Oh, boy. Okay, Pyro is not a big deal. Wait. Pyro break? Why would you use Tierno? And what? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> and what? What does Pyro... Okay. Um... <laughs> Okay, so I don't want to deal with any Pyro shenanigans, I guess. I'll just start dealing some solid damage here with Evil Ball. And then Y Cyclone. That Shaman has a very, very, very nice target on its head at the moment. Um, this attack does deal 20 more damage for each of my benched Pokemon. So it's gonna deal 80 damage. But then he pretty much has no follow-up pretty much has no follow-up and my Pregnant Veltal has three hits on this Volcanion which is awesome okay I'm gonna touch that darkness energy there and all I'm gonna do is well I'll end I guess I will end fine okay so I do get Fighting Fury Belt, but that's not exactly the card I wanted. I would prefer a Float Stone. Um, Parallel CD. I don't want to play Parallel CD. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna White Side one. Get my KO. Move the DC to the Fright Knight Veltal, and draw my first prize. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty, pretty eh game, I guess. I mean, in the sense that it's not gonna be hard at all. I don't think. Um, Baby Volcanion is just gonna wreck face here. It's just gonna wreck absolute face. 
fighting fury belt. That is perfectly fine. And he's gonna end, that's also perfectly fine as we're drawing five cards, not something like three or two. So as long as we find an energy to retreat the active, which we do not, but we find Olympia, which works just as well. Even better, actually. Even better. There's a Flareon EX in play. <laughs> But he has no flurry in the excess ability, so that's good. Decides to attach to Pyro and to the Flurry in the X. Okay. So I was going to try to target the Houndoom, but I feel like it's a lot better to simply go after the Flareon, which is the thing that he's gonna start powering up. Um, Ultra Ball. Simply to thin out my deck. Um, I already have the carb. I mean, maybe I'll need Eveltal in the future. Now, if I limit my opponent's bench, he discards the Shaman, so I don't want to do that. So I will limit my own bench. And I even reduce the damage he's dealing, so that's pretty good. And let's just pitch Black Spear and start targeting the Flareon, which is a potential threat for later in the game. Now, this Fright Knight Veltal should take three prizes on its own. Um, and if my opponent doesn't counter Stadium, he's not even gonna draw. or he's not even gonna deal any damage. Oh, never mind. Huh. Never mind. I forgot about my own Carpenter. Whoopsies. Whoopsie daisies. Oh boy. Incinerate. Removes my tool card and deals 70 damage. Okay. So, I have a choice here. I can Olympia or I can Sycamore. I feel like using Sycamore is much better. Um, the damage reduction from the stadium actually comes in very, very clutch. Um, I'm gonna attach this there. I'm gonna play this, but I don't expect to hit at all. I drew five energy <laughs> off of that sycamore and okay I can KO the pyro I can potentially retreat yeah I think I'm gonna retreat if I KO the pyro it doesn't really have a good follow-up I guess huh yeah, I'm gonna KO the Pyro, might as well. Wait, yeah, I do KO. So there's my second prize card. Another Fright Knight Evelto. If I can get that other Fright Knight Evelto powered up, that's gonna be game, 100%. Um, no counter stadium means Volcanion doesn't deal any damage. He does have the Floatstone, but Unless he attaches an energy right now, which he does, and counter stadiums. Yeah, he's not gonna deal any damage. That's very good. Place ball is dealing 110 damage right now, minus 20, that's 90. So now is when I retreat into Fright Knight by paying the DCE. And then I. I'm gonna KO these two, and then I start powering up this other Velto, I guess. And I pitch Black Spear and target the Flareon once again. He doesn't counter Stadium, the maximum damage he can deal is 110, so if Fright Knight Velto survives, and that would actually work out even better for us. Whoops. Because we would get to it the Flareon and a Shaman. But he does find the counter stadium. So now all he needs is an energy, and sure he will KO Ivelto. And it's not the end of the world. The Max Elixir actually goes onto the Pyro here. Yeah, there's the energy for the turn. So my brand runs, there's seven energy in play. 
seven, eight, nine. Just enough. Okay. Just enough. Oh, I wish I had attached to this Evelto. I actually wish I had attached to that Evelto. Okay. So I'm gonna attach a DCE. And <coughs> what I'm actually gonna do. I'm just gonna take a KO with Evil Ball. Because. Yeah. I mean. I'm just down to one price card. So I might as well just go all in on this Evil Ball. Well, I'm down to two cards, that's true. That is true. Because I didn't get to KO this Volcanian. He's gonna remove my tool card once again. Let's use the first attack, flame charge. I mean, my deck, my deck, my opponent is probably playing with the cards he does have access to. So, I mean, props to him for building an interesting deck, a viable deck, perhaps. Um, okay, so he Lysander's up. Right, Nighty Bell, though. Okay, so that delays. Now it actually doesn't, because we just free retreat here. Free retreat, we take those. No, we don't free retreat, we just retreat. And we stick a more? Yeah, there's a victory. So, um, that third game, definitely not the best. The first two, though, were against very competitive decks, where we won one match and we lost another match. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this Fright Night Eveltal deck. Definitely a very a very good contender in standard format. Eveltal just since its release almost over three years ago just won't go away. <laughs> Eveltal EX um, is a card that TPCI just wants to wants to keep alive. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me guys. Thank you so so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like if you can on the video and Sun and Moon is coming very soon. Twitch streams are coming very soon, sooner than you would think. Now I probably won't have a regular schedule for those until next year because um, of the next regionals I'm going to in London, it's gonna be hard to really schedule a set, a set timetable but for next year it is in my plans to make sure that I am organized and Twitch streams are something consistent at least once or twice per week in a set time zone or time frame rather. So yeah, um, another surprise is coming along the way. Um, that's gonna be it for me guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet because I know a lot of you have yet to subscribe, it really helps out the channel. We are, I don't know if we've reached it yet, but we are very close to 5,000, so it would mean a lot to me if today, that is the 31st of October, we actually reach 5,000 before November begins. That would be amazing. And that will be all, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you guys on Wednesday for some Darkrai Giratina action. Bye-bye.